Testing, testing. Hey, can everyone hear me? Hey, everyone, how's it going? What's up? What's up? Uh, so this is going to be a little bit something new here. Um, uh, I was asked on uh, DeviantArt a little while ago to make a tutorial based around uh, how to draw a Triceratops. And um, while I generally avoid doing like, you know, little tutorial things, uh, I, I thought this would be like kind of interesting. So I figured, uh, hey, what the heck, go ahead and do it. So we're going to leap into that right now. I'm going to uh, do a couple of draw alongs and I'm going to sort of go through it step by step for you here. Um, you can watch this along as, uh, you know, just sort of some background noise. Lord knows I do that with a bunch of art videos. And, or you can try this as kind of like a draw along with me sort of thing. Doesn't really matter. It's up to you. Uh, this is uh, supposed to be a hobby. You know, it's, it's not, I mean, let's, let's not get uh, too stressed about it. But if you are going to do a draw along, here is one recommendation that I very, very strongly suggest you do. I want you to, it's, as soon as possible, go down to your local toy store and pick yourself up a little toy Triceratops. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be expensive. I think the one I got here is like, I don't know, like two, three, four bucks, something like that. But just, just something to have and to hold and to exist in three-dimensional space and be able to rotate around as you need for whatever angle that you're going to draw your, your Triceratops from. Um, for obvious reasons, it's a lot easier to get your hands on a toy Triceratops than on a real one. You know, not all of us have the ability to live in a nice city where we can just go down to the Natural History Museum and see skeletons of Triceratopses. And even if we could, we might not be able to look at that Triceratops skull from any, like, angle. Or, you know, not just the skull, but any, any part of that Triceratops. You might not be able to see it from any angle you want. You, you might be limited only to a couple of different angles that whoever it was put the museum display up thought were appropriate. And you know what? That's, that's fine on their part. I'm not knocking any like museum people, but I think that having your own little model is really beneficial for things like this. So um, we're going to start here with some of the fundamental shapes and I'm going to take a good long look at my little model Triceratops here. And uh, while you can't see it, I also have a picture of a skull pulled up on my other monitor. And I apologize for my squeaky chair. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and we're going to try and just sort of uh, sketch the basic shapes of a Triceratops skull. We're going to start with the head first. So I keep saying skull. We're going to start with the head. We're going to try for the basic shapes first, and then we are going to uh, extrapolate from there. So the basic Triceratops head, sort of this square looking brain case and then it um, comes down slightly, rounds off. This is sort of like the pre-mouth part. And then we have the beak. Well, it's not the best beak in the world. Let me back that up. We have the beak here. That rounds it off. And then down underneath, we're going to give him a little open jaw and the because the beak meets about here, we're going to have his little underbeak come right around there. Sort of try and follow the arc of the swivel. Swivel is here. It's going to make an arc that extends like this. We're just going to try and make that there.
clean it up a little. We're going to add the upper portion of the jawbone. All right. So this is sort of our basic shapes here. This is the, the cranium and the mandible of our triceratops, but there's a couple of things we're missing. Astute viewers will notice we're missing two, well, three, or perhaps even four very important things that the uh, Triceratops has that most other dinosaurs don't have or that make it very distinctive. Three things are the horns. Triceratops has a kind of shorter little stubby horn coming out the nose here. And then he's got another horn that comes out over here. It comes out over the eye. The eye is about two thirds back on our little square brain case here. So two thirds back is gonna be right about here, um, but it's not flush. It's not flush with this line we gave it earlier. It's actually raised on a little ridge. It gets its own little ridge, comes up, kind of peaks above the eye, then goes down. Um, that's pretty rough at the moment, but that's okay. Um, and the horn actually sits slightly behind the eye. This is where our base for the horn is gonna be. You can bring it up here. Um, there's a lot of different proportions from a lot of different Triceratops skulls. There's not a whole lot of consistency from what I can see. And maybe that has to do with the variables within individuals. Maybe it has to do with like the growth of individual horns. Maybe the skulls just got deformed in the millions of years that they were sitting underground. I don't know. But um, just, um, you know, get a look at a lot of different Triceratops skulls and just sort of get a feel for the proportions and just kind of uh, go from there. There's not really a, like, as long as the basic proportions are down and it kind of basically like pulls forward, um, you're not really going to be doing too much wrong with Triceratops skulls. Or at least with the horns. Sorry, not skulls, the horns. Get rid of my stray line there. Um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to do the second one here. Um, we're going to try and make it look like it's kind of in the back a little. Um, it's a little bit not as um, like it, it's okay if it's a little off from the the other one that's okay um, because of perspective and things it's gonna look a little bit different anyway um, so what we're gonna do now uh, those are our horns we're already starting to look a bit like a triceratops here those are our horns. What we're going to do is we're also now going to add the shield or the frill. Um, I've heard a lot of people call it a frill. I like to call it a shield. Sort of like a you know an, an old Arthurian knight. We've got the swords and the little dagger, and then we've got the shield, and that makes it a knight. So it's going to come back here and we're sort of looking to double the length of what we already have. So we've got this here and then we're looking to double that and that's going to take us all the way back here. Um, I've got it flared a little too much. Um, I'm going to have to rotate my thing. Sorry for anyone who's trying to draw along. I just got to rotate that there. Okay, so it does kind of pull it back a little bit. You will notice as you are drawing that you may wind up overemphasizing the shield. Um, and that's okay because if you do find 
you are overemphasizing the shield. Uh, if you're digital, you can do it this digitally, or if you're traditional, you can you'll probably have to erase. But you can make it slightly less than half. Actually, my proportions may already have been messed up. But anyway, uh, if you make the, the shield just slightly smaller than half, that might fix any kind of optical effects there. Um, is the thing you encounter sometimes in art, sometimes the mathematical, well, what the math says is not actually how the eye views it. So you kind of have to sort of make judgment calls and um, kind of deform things a little bit this way and a little bit that. I'm gonna add some to his beak here. I don't know why, I've decided he's a he. There we go. Just let us know. Remind us in the future. It's a he. So, um, if you happen to be looking at a Triceratops skull, you will notice these massive cavities in the skull right around here. Um, those are to make it a little bit lighter, make the skull lighter so the animal doesn't need these giant bulging muscles to try and keep its head up. Um, also probably has to do with uh, the sinus cavity. Maybe they were used for resonance chambers. Uh, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know that anyone knows for certain. But we're going to, we're just going to mark that on our little sketch here, uh, just in case we decide to use it for later. Uh, we might not, we may, we might not, who knows. Um, okay, so our sketch here is getting pretty, uh, look pretty detailed. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make a new layer, um, drop the opacity on that one. And this way I can add details as I need. One of the first ones we're going to do is we're going to add the little jowl spike. It has a proper name. Jowl spike is just what I call it. Um... In life, probably, the hard bits to the Triceratops were all on the upper side, all around here. And the soft bits were all down here. So uh, this spike helps to cover where the neck would join, down here. We're not worried about the neck just yet, but we are going to add the little jowl spike. Um, while we're at it, I'm going to add the orbital ridge over the eye. Um, that does have the slight effect of giving him these kind of angry eyes. You don't have to include this if you don't want to give your uh, Triceratops that permanent scowly look. But again, if you look at the bones, um, what Triceratopses did usually have this kind of forward-facing orbital ridge here. Um, and that was just there to, I would presume, protect the animal's eye in case of a fight or if it should run into a predator or even if it's just like running through the underbrush. You know, don't want to get your eye gouged out by a uh, tree branch or something. That'd be a very bad way to have your day. So um, the eye orbit is round, but I don't think we know exactly how the eye sat in the socket. So, um, I am going to do something a little odd here. I'm going to look up cow eyes because cows are grassland grazers that move in herds. And so were triceratops. Most Triceratopsians, we believe, are grassland grazers that moved in herds. So I'm going to go to cow's eye here. Um, it's mostly dark sclera and dark pupil. Um, there is some lidded overhang. It's a little too big at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead 
and shrink her down again. I didn't do a good job of staying inside my eyes, my own eye socket. I drew the eye socket and then I didn't stay inside it. Oh well, that's that's me, I guess. Never can follow rules, even if they're in my, even if they're on my own, even if they're on my own, I can't follow them. Uh, I'm going to give him a little uh, underline here. Da, da, da. It's not real important at the moment. I'm just doing this. Um, partly as a guide to give the sense of there being flesh there. And also, you know, partly it's fun. Partly just because it's fun. You know, it's art. It's supposed to be a little fun. It's okay for it to be a little fun. Just do a little something just because it's fun. Okay. So, um... We're all going to come back to the shield here. Again, if you look at your uh, examples of Ceratopsian skulls, or if you pick your little toy up, you might see that right behind the jowl spike here, this thing I've been calling the jowl spike, um, there's a little recess. Like the frill doesn't do like this nice line I've been doing here. Um, it actually comes back in and then connects back with the jowl spike. And so there'll be a little a little uh, gap here, um, and I don't quite know what it is. Uh, maybe because the uh, shield is trying to um, meet with the rest of the skull, and it has to like close real tight with that, and then the jowl spike is just a little extra protection. I don't know. Um, so we're back here and we're back to real like the the flare of the shield here um now this was kind of uh bumpy i don't know whether what how else to put it it's kind of bumpy it's just got these little ridges and protrusions on it some places like I, i'm doing right like uh some depictions you'll see like I'm doing right now where they're really just uh, kind of bumps that don't really like have any kind of pokey you know like like they're just bumps in the, the, the skin or the ridge some have a little do like this and they'll have like a little bit of bone or uh, keratin or some other hard substance poking up out of the ridge poking up out of the skin you know, make these little, like, bone studs, I guess. If you were, if it were a turtle, you'd call these the scoots, but it's not a turtle, so I don't know what you'd call them. And then some depictions go even further and have these kinds of, like, broad spikes coming out of the shield. Um, so what we're going to do for this one, actually, is we're going to do all three. As you can see, we're going to adopt all three um, depictions with the intention of just showing off. Like, I don't know, you could, you could imagine a world where uh, the Triceratops little uh, scoots just start as little bumps down here and as they get further up the shield they get a little bony out here they kind of project a little bit and then finally they come to these big spiky bits spiky bits yeah there we go you can be, you can tell I'm being pretty, uh, pretty vague and sketchy with my lines at the moment. And, uh, that's by design. I'm not really trying to get too, um, detailed, too accurate at the moment. I'm just trying to come in here and kind of clean up my line work a little bit. Um, so we're going to come over here to where the horn meets the brow. So in the skull, this is all kind of one piece. It all just kind of flows together like this. So I'm going to keep with that theme. 
and I'm going to give him a little bit of exposure here. It is commonly accepted that these uh, horn tips were exposed to the elements, maybe not directly. There may have been some kind of antler surrounding them or something like that, but it is generally accepted that these bony bits were exposed to the air so that he could poke, poke people with them. Um, so you can see here, I'm doing like this kind of fleshy socket that it sits in. I'm sort of expanding on the brow ridge. Um, that's, that's just to uh, like really emphasize that this is different from this. Uh, I'm gonna bring back my gun, my undersketch there. I'm gonna bring this up, do, 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 do. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Come on, give me my horn, do my horn, there we go. Okay, so for the rear one, for the rear one, um, I am not going to go as in depth on that because I'm going to sort of make this the center. Well, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, so um, a lot of creatures that have this kind of, uh, what am I thinking of? This kind of triangular head, you know, look at, a, look at a dog. And if it's got a brow ridge, the brow ridge is sometimes the highest point on the skull. Like if you're looking it on, here's a brow, here's the one brow ridge, here's the other brow ridge, it'll kind of arc between them like that. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the, the uh, seat for these horns kind of the highest point in the mid ridge of the skull. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have this little guide here that's just going to be a line, let people know that there's things here. And then we're going to do this. We're going to make another little like fleshy socket um, here. And um, I'm a little too high up. I'm a little too high up there, I think. I'm going to try and bring that back down. How does that look? Uh, when I turn the sketch off a little too much. Okay, so um, <laughs> if you're drawing along at home, don't do like me. Uh, plan this out a little bit better. Um, I would say it's probably safe to make the far one a little lower than what you had intended. A little lower than the, the closer one, simply because of perspective. Going to finish out the horn here. Again, turn my under sketch off. How does that look? You know, that actually looks pretty good. That actually looks pretty good. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, so um, we're going to give just a little hint of an opposite orbital ridge here. Uh, and then we're going to come back over here. Now, if you'll remember, underneath, there's not a whole lot of anchor here. For this horn, uh, it's just kind of floating out over space. So we're not going to give him as much of a deep flesh socket here. Maybe just a little bit of a shallow one. Maybe just a little bit of fleshy ridge there, just to let us know that it's there. Okay. Then we're going to have this guy come on out. This little, this little nose horn, what I called the dagger earlier, uh, if it doesn't have a great anchor, probably wasn't meant to be a primary predator repellent. If it was, it would have been secured a little bit better. Um, so this this might have just been for uh, handling rivals, you know, non-lethal rivals, or maybe dealing with smaller threats, that sort of thing. Um, so anyway, uh, again, now this part you're gonna probably gonna want to pay attention to. A lot of toys, especially a lot of toys that are based on older designs, 
will kind of get the mouth wrong on your Triceratops. So what we're going to do here, first off, we're going to put a spot for the nose. The nostril here is going to be a little bit forward of the nose horn. A little bit forward of the nose horn. Um, now, most modern depictions, and I believe it's uh, mostly agreed upon by scientists, is that this part uh, was actually more of a beak. It's more of a parrot's beak, it's sort of connected by flesh like this, and he probably couldn't open his, no his mouth all that wide. Um, and this is important because you'll see a lot of older depictions where the um, Triceratops will have a lot of these hinge mouths here. You'll see that a lot in older art. Let me get this one on here. Yeah, see a lot of, and they won't even really give him a beak so much. It'll just kind of be like this fleshy, hard, pointy thing here. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to try and conform. <laughs> We're going to conform to consensus, and we are going to accept that people probably know more than us and we're just going to take the beak on faith. We're going to take the parrot beak on faith. I don't uh, recommend this for everything. For a lot of uh, paleo art, I do recommend you do your own research, but I'm kind of stupid and I don't really want to uh, spend all night uh, asking myself and the internet whether, uh, whether we know uh, for certain what mouth parts a triceratops have and how do we know so i'm just going to take it on faith you don't have to you can do all that questioning if you want or you know you could uh, just go ahead and give your triceratops that kind of hinge jaw that's it's up to you it's your triceratops okay so uh again i'm going to give him a little bit of a flesh overhang here um, not for any particular reason, just, I don't know, just kind of feels right. Uh, and then for three dimensionality sake, going to give him the other side of his lower beak and the other side of his mouth, of his cheek. That's his cheek. You don't. Uh, you might notice that um, if you're really hard up on perspective, you might notice that uh, some of this probably doesn't follow perspective all that well. Uh, sometimes that's fine. Uh, sometimes you don't have to squeaky chair. Uh, sorry, had to be repositioned there. But anyway, uh, sometimes you don't have to follow perspective all that much um, in order to portray three dimensionality. And I'm going to bring the little jowl spike up here, have it disappear kind of into his jaw there. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more lines there to uh, sort of imply a stretchiness. Um, so there is a tendency in a lot of paleo art to draw the sunken in bits of the skull the air holes if you will to draw those and have them visible and maybe draw like the little ridge on the jowl spike here and um uh, all, all sorts of things of that nature i will not be doing that uh it's not that i think it looks bad it's just that i don't think it's terribly accurate i don't see a reason for why flesh would be so tight on the skull that you could see its its uh, air holes its its air holes here unless the creature was starving um, and uh, this individual is not starving this is a very very healthy full male specimen in the fullness of of his bull maleness, and uh, he is not starving. In fact, he uh, he looks like he's kind of spoiling for a fight. 
Yeah, that angry, <laughs> that open mouth and the angry expression. Yeah, that kind of looks. Grrr. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let me get a sip of soda here. So yeah, um, that is our skull, or not our skull, that's our head, um, from the side. So, um, we could go on, uh, we could do one from the front. Um, but I don't know if I want to get stuck into that right now. This video has already gone on fairly long. So what I'm going to do instead is let's go on and let's talk about the neck a little bit. Um, let me get a contrast color here. So the neck, um, probably joined, this is probably where or at least from the uh, examples I can find, this looks to be where the neck joined, the, the actual spinal column. Um, and if you look at skeletons, you will see that the back, the spine, uh, comes out above the eye, comes out about here, comes out about like this. Which means under this frill, it's got to go this way. It's got to come on. It's not frill, shield, whatever. It's got to come down under this way. Under the shield, it's got to come down, kind of arc down like that. Um, maybe that's accurate. Oh, wait, no. I found one that's even better. Okay. Okay. Found. A source that's even better. And what we're going and what it does is it angles through the shield like so. So what we are looking at is we are needing to get a spine from here to here, and we also need to put our shoulder about here. So what I'm going to make a guess that the neck starts about here and it just kind of goes a little bit straight back, goes down a little bit and that is, well, flush it out a little Put a little more volume in there, and that is the underside of the creature. Oh, I got the I got the shul I got the shoulder too low. That's part of my problem. Maybe if I didn't have my thing cocked at such a strange angle. There we go. That's better. Um so this is our spine here, and that's kind of the, the top edge of the back, most creatures don't really have anything going on above the spine. It's one of the few places in most creatures' bodies where the bones are pretty close to the surface. So we're just going to give him the back here um, and move the shoulder again because I can't seem to find the proper position for that. But around that shoulder we are going to put some very oop go the go the other way we're going to give him some backward sweeping you know what you know what why am i doing this why am i doing this to myself why am i doing this to myself grab folder move that way okay there we go i don't know i don't know why i always take the hard way And the uh, upper.
upper arm kind of goes backward at an angle like this, and then the inner arm or the lower arm comes forward. Uh, now these are big bones. You look at the skeleton, you see these are very big bones in the in this limb. Very, very powerful. Um, very, very powerful, um, what, what's the word? Uh, very powerful limbs. So very big bones means they've got a lot of big, big animal that they're moving around underneath them. Uh, the back here will continue on up because most depictions of the uh, Triceratops have them kind of splayed forward. They're kind of leaning forward as if about to lunge. Um, the knees come to about here. And then go on that way. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm being kind of vague over here with the body, I, I don't want to get stuck into like the whole bodiness at the moment. In fact, I, I'm actually going to erase anything. There we go. Um, I, I, I don't want to get too stuck into the the, uh, the rest of the body. I, I want to say that for another video. But anyway, um, so anyway, these, these are big bones. They, they would have had to have had a lot of muscle around them. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to add just a ton of big, beefy volume around these muscles. Um, Ceratopsians walked on their splayed toes, but in my opinion, I think that the closest foot you're going to find to a Ceratopsian, the closest modern analog, is going to be a rhino foot. And they're kind of, uh, they're kind of lumpy, kind of lumpy a little bit, honestly. Frankly, you know, that's okay. They get the job done for the rhino, and you will never hear me talking bad about a rhino. Ever. Because rhinos are fucking big, man. <laughs> Whoops, uh, I should edit that out. Because rhinos are big, man. Uh, I know they. I know these don't look so great at the moment, but... Um, we're going to add a little toe. We're going to add a little toenail here. Rhinos have them. Um, it's probably up for debate as to whether Ceratopsians had them. Um, if they did, they were probably pointier than this because, again, you look at the skeleton, kind of pointy little toe bones, pointy little toe bones. And uh, we're going to come out here. All right, um, this is mostly just going to be a pad here. In fact, might even make it look kind of softer. Um, I like to think that these uh, feet kind of splayed outwards. They kind of went like, yeah, but also, yeah. On the other side so we're only going to draw a couple of little toe claws on this side maybe just the two maybe a little inkling of a third here yeah there we go um and we're gonna erase our little spine there, yep, and uh, we're gonna also erase this one. And we're all, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna erase this. Oops, didn't want to erase all of that, dang it. Pay attention now, Ben. So um, this is really just going to be about detailing. I'm just going to add a couple of details here to kind of make this look more like an elbow 
equivalent and add some details here to make that look like a wrist equivalent. Um, there's one thing is that um, Triceratops had a massive scapula, a shoulder blade. And that is this giant thing right here. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna add volume until I think it looks right. Yeah. Yeah, we're starting to look pretty good there. Um race that a little. Yeah, look at that. Add slight amount of chest there just to show that we didn't completely cut the creature in half. Uh, I'm going to erase that slightly, bring this forward. Yeah, there you go. Um, convert to drawing color. And there we go. That's a pretty decent sketch of a Triceratops. Um, maybe look for more of this in the future, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about other elements of uh, Ceratopsian anatomy. Uh, we will uh, examine other angles, maybe do a couple action poses of the creature. But yeah, let's. Um, uh, I, I think we'll uh, call it here for tonight. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you'll come back, come back for uh, round two. And uh, you have yourselves a good night. Bye-bye.